it's a good, it's just a good win. It's just a good win. It's a win that the Packers needed. It's not, uh, it's not pretty, but it's a good win. Everything I got wrong. You know, last week we talked about offensive or defensively. This is this was a Stafford game plan for me. So this is going to be ugly for the Rams if it didn't go right. We highlighted the young, the young front and Aaron Donald being kind of think something that I was at least surprised about in the sense that I didn't think they were going to be as good as they were um, on tape. And they actually, they, it ended up being a really good, a good job. Uh, they ended up doing a very good job up front. Uh, quick numbers. Brian Young led the team with 10 tackles, two sacks, tackle for loss. Kobe Turner, number 91. We saw him on Myers a couple times. 10 tackles, one sack, one tackle for loss. Aaron Donald, four tackles, one sack, one tackle for loss. Terrorized the quarterback a couple times. Just makes you scared as hell just being out there. Uh, we talked about their soft sword zone coverage underneath, how that was going to give you your underneath and medium routes available. We, we hit that one with, um, with uh, Luke Musgrave. We obviously hit some of the quick outs. That was good to see. Um, a lot of high percentage throws. That's one of the reasons that Jordan loves 2026, but only for 228. Nine different receivers. So it's the kind of the stuff that we thought was going to you're going to see. We're going to see. It's just a question of offensively. There's not a lot that Cooper Cup can do if nobody can throw him the football. Um, and and the Packers, to their credit, listen. Shark smells water. He goes for it. Right. Excuse me. Shark smells blood. He goes for it. And if blood's you know blood's in the water when you got a backup guy playing in, in the Sean McVay offense in rain who hasn't gotten a lot of snaps in the last couple of years. Go over the keys to victory that we had. Number one, be on the same page. Take the easy wins. Um, everyone can win if we if we just play smart. No penalties, no mental errors in blocking, no you know mental errors in route running, reading defenses. I didn't know this before. I said it earlier. The Packers have are leading the league in penalties. They had seven penalties yesterday. It's terrible. Two offsides, which were not good calls. Fair enough. Um, but we have fifty nine penalties for the year. Not. I thought the Oak. I thought the Oakland now the Las Vegas Raiders like just had them. For in in perpetuity, they were going to be the the league leaders in in penalties. Like I think when I was growing up, there was like twenty years in a row they were the league leaders in penalties. It was like what they were known for. They were known for drafting dudes who ran four twos, and leading the league in penalties. And now apparently we've taken that over. So who knew? You know, we talk about discipline, the kind of what what character traits, behavior traits you want in your football team. So that's not one of them. Uh, the second thing was talking about just being able to reroute Puka Higby um, and Stafford holding on to the ball for a long time. I'll tell you, I, I was surprised, and, and let me get the numbers again. I for, I I don't know if I have the numbers up what what uh, Hick, or what uh, their quarterback was from a passing perspective, but we only had one sack by by Owens. We did have four QB hits. Rashawn Gary could have had a number of couple a couple of things with the uh, the face mask, and then he, and then the next play he had the the offsides call, and he you know he's there a lot. To be fair, but we we really. We had five tackles for loss in the running game, which was great. Uh, one of them being that jet sweep around on the third and, and inches. But we didn't pressure that. I thought the, I just thought their interior line did pretty well. Kenny Clark getting hurt was a, was an issue. I liked the way our guys played in the run game, but not a lot of opportunities in the passing game. And I thought, to be fair, we didn't pressure him as much as I thought we would. In other words, they, he was getting rid of the ball. Or the, the offensive line was doing a pretty good job. And then again, You've got some exquisite route runners on the other side, man. They run routes like nobody's business. Cooper Cup's, you know, if he's not the best in the league, he's top two. So they're going to be able to find ways to get people open. Um, and and obviously Sean McVay's a genius. He's gonna he's gonna find a you know a way to get the ball to that guy's hand if he needs to. And the third thing we talked about is just keeping it simple, try not to get in a scheming contest with Sean McVay. Um, this was kind of the this was the game plan. The Rams roster without that quarterback, you, you you're not beating us. Um, it's interesting, and we showed one play that was almost exactly the same. That's kind of out of the bag. You know, we're talking about the 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 running back screen with the with the tight end kind of bubbling out. This, from an offensive and defensive standpoint, we do a lot of things similarly: base three four, soft zone coverage on defense. Obviously, the the Shanahan slash McVay tree is you know Matt Lafleur is part of that. So it was it was interesting to see two teams. Maybe some different philosophies on how they built their rosters, but fundamentally they're trying to do a lot of the same things and um, having issues maybe in different parts of the plan just because of roster development. And then obviously, you know, some coach pref coaching preferences and whatnot 
but a lot of kind of the differences in this team are these teams are more individual, you know, can you beat your guy one on one versus maybe schematically? So again, the takeaway, it's like how much can you take away from this game? I I, I really just I really just don't know, to be fair. I really just don't know. Um before listener questions, let's do listener questions first. So listener questions, how did Myers play? Um, I'll, I'll hit a couple of these guys. I think we already hit a lot of them. Myers did some really good. It, Myers is always the same guy. The spotlight's just on. Myers did some really good things. Myers, 91 had some good, my, 91 made enough plays against Myers that 91 had a good game as well. So when the guy across from you is having a good game, that means, you know, you did some good things. He did some good things. The thing that was missing that happens sometimes with him is there was no whiffs. There was no mental errors. There was no just a guy's just standing in the hole. You know, a guy, they had to, he had to be physically defeated to, like he had to be technically beat to win versus just making a, a mental error. And I think, quite frankly, that's a big deal. It's okay to get beat physically. I mean, you can improve that. Like we can work on that. If I get beat physically, it's like, oh, well, I, I can help you technically get better. If you're, go in the wrong direction. It's just another layer of stuff you've got to figure out. So I thought, you know, I thought he, the play improved. Certainly um, the neutral zone stuff we talked about, it's just everything uh, that's going on right now. I think in the national football league, I love watching the game, but aside from that, what's going on in, in terms of constant rule changes, emphasizing who's in the stands. Um, just trying to broaden the audience to make more money instead of, uh, you know, for me, it's like, I've never liked anything that everybody likes. I, you know, you, you kind of like things that you like for a certain reason. If you, if you, if you like a certain kind of music, like I don't listen to pop music. I like, I listen to punk music. I listen to some old, I listen to some old school rap music. Like I listen to heavy metal. Not everybody's into that stuff. And I kind of like that. Like, it's okay. I'm okay with not being, say, I, you know, but these, these, like the National Football League is marketing to everybody now. And it's just, there's a bigger conversation, but it's just, it, it changes the, a lot of the approach to the game. And we'll talk about that in a second. Are you more convinced about Jordan Love after this game? No. I mean, we talked about it at the beginning. It's, he is, He's a he's a player that has talent. He's got the potential word. And it just comes down to how fast you can pick this up, how fast you're going to learn it, what are your expectations for yourself, and how you want to work to get there. It's not like it's not rocket science. It really isn't. Um, I, I think he's going to be a good player. I just think the it, it's again, I'll say this every week. You can't think about Aaron Rodgers, and then watch Jordan Love and not feel a certain way about it because Aaron was so good. And you just have to, you have to deprogram yourself. Was there more juice out there? I don't think so. I, mean, I think when Keyshawn Nixon returns a, a touchdown or, a, 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 excuse me, a, 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 a kickoff for, to the 50, I think everybody saw juiced up, man. I think that's a big deal. I think when you get a pick, I think all that stuff, when good things happen, people are excited. But I, there was a lot of mistakes in this game. There's still a lot of penalties. This was an ugly game. It was in the rain. Um, I love the energy from the young guys. Uh, this is a team that needs validation and needs to win. And they got what they needed. And, and you, you're happy for them. You hope they build on it. But let's not act like – there's no listen, there's no come-to-Jesus meeting in the National Football League that works. I've been in a ton of them. I, I've, I've, I've called meetings. Guys got to figure their stuff out, man. That's all there is to it. I got some tape on Sean Ryan. Everyone's asking, should Sean Ryan be playing and said, okay, here's the seven plays. He had seven plays, guys. Seven plays. Let's not get crazy. Playing right guard. First play. Let's just go through it. What do you like? I don't like his set. I don't like the shuffle across because you leave space. I love the body position. I want to see your feet in the ground. I don't like your hands outside because you can get bull rushed. Okay. I like his base. I like the, I like physically. You like the way he looks. I like that he's chasing that guy. He's looking for work. I love that. I think that's a behavior that we need more of. I love it. 
Next play. I'll, here we go. Love the stance, by the way. The stance is balanced. It's a, it sounds like not a big deal. Look at his stance and look at EJ's stance. His stance is better. He's he's square. Like everything looks like it fits in more a little bit. EJ's uh, left leg, left foot kick out a lot. Slip call. We already saw movement on this from John Runyon Jr. and Zach. This is good movement. Go up to the, the corner. Look at the finish off the line of scrimmage, or excuse me, off the screen. Big time. Doesn't take a good first step. Doesn't matter right here, but he doesn't take a good first step. It's not gaining ground. Gets a really good player. Maybe that makes a difference. But against this guy, it doesn't. We'll go next play. They're in that base 3-4. Okay, so a little bit different kind of scheme. Doesn't take a step. This is the play where they didn't bring the safety down. So his hands are outside. All he's got to do is kind of capture this, this B gap. Where he's, he's got the four technique playing over the, the tackle. He's got to go out and, and base drive. Again, you can see that he's powerful. Got to work on his hands. First step was not good. You're putting your ass in the hole. You'd like to see Zach Tom's doing this right. You see how Zach Tom's hands are inside. Hips are engaged. He's trying to walk that guy back. And he's at an angle. That's what you want to see. Because now AJ Dillon doesn't have to make this cut. Okay, so it's not that it's a bad job. It's a you know it's a winning block. It's not what you want, right? Zach Tom's what you want right here. Here we go. They're in an under front, meaning the three techniques over the left guard here. Got another slip. Run up. Not much going. Not good. Not bad. All right, got the two eye. Again, stance is good. He can deliver power from there. They do, they cut off him here. And let's watch the first step. Gains ground first step. I'd like to see second step upfield. I'd like to see his hands inside so he can drive block. He's got both hands outside, but he can see he. That, this time he engages his hips in the defender. He really gets the guy moving side to side. That's a big deal because it opens up the hole. Even if he tries to play back, Aaron Jones can get through. This is a great block. Always things to work on. Like when I point stuff out, it doesn't mean, just, it doesn't mean he didn't do a good job. It's just like, what would you like to see ideally? Good job trying to finish. Now you're going up against uh, the, the, the goat here. Right now you just went, oh. And if he's got a base drive, and Aaron's going to get him with leverage, going to get hands inside. He's, you know, he's, he's got his kind of, we call that ass in the hole. So better footwork is needed. You need to, you know, a time and step gain ground with your second step. You need to try to stay square to line of scrimmage. Get your hands outside. Obviously, he's almost getting lifted up here. Aaron Donald is a different animal, not the best guy to try your first drive block on. But he doesn't get knocked over. He doesn't get shed. He gets pushed back. But they, they manage to get through. So, you, you know, it's not, it's not an L. It's not an L. I think we got the last one here. Does a good job with his balance here. And, and that's the thing I like about him watching this, this short clip is that he plays with a good hip hinge. So he's in a position to win all the time. He gets that outside hand and kind of tries to hook Aaron Donald. So he, this is more like, I'm just going to position block and just make sure this guy doesn't get in the game. He gets that done. This is a win. Good base and body position. So it's a good job. And I'm not saying it's better or worse than John Runyon Jr. It just, if people want to have that discussion, you can't, it's tough to tell out of seven plays. Um, And I thought John Randy Jr. did a lot of good things, but there's also some plays like we saw when the quarterback got hit. You kind of wondering what that is. Uh, the Aaron Donald play action, under center play action, third and two on the goal line where, where Josh doesn't come over. Like that's a, they've schemed it that way. I'm, I'm complaining because they didn't scheme it the way I think they should scheme it. Not that, you know, not that John did some, did the right thing by going, getting beat inside. The last thing I want to talk about today is, is this <clears throat> just really quick. Uh, I, 
I was just watching games yesterday, and you just listen. These penalties that they're calling now, like, don't lose sight of what's happening. It was first with the quarterbacks. And listen, the quarterbacks run the league, blah, blah, blah. They're special. Okay. So you got K.J. Henry of the Commanders gets a hit on Mac Jones. Not a roughing the passer. I, by any standard of definition, it's not roughing the passer. Jeffrey Simmons gets one on the Titans this week. You're going, He's he already launched. The ball is then thrown. He hits him as the ball. I, it's impossible to miss. The worst one I saw was this, number 99 in the Bills. I don't even know who it is. He hits Joe Burrow. And Joe, he turns, so Joe lands on him, and he still gets a hold, uh, roughing the passer call. There's, there's a ton more. And again, the refs are being told, we're going to penalize and penalize and penalize until, I, I don't know what the answer is for, for defensive players. I feel bad for defensive players. I don't know what they're supposed to do. But that's one like, subset of issues. And you know why they're doing it, and they've been pretty transparent about it. This is a quarterback-driven league. People don't want to watch backup quarterback. People don't want to watch the Rams-Packers game if Matthew Stafford's not playing. If you're in L.A., they don't want to watch the game. I get it. Like, nobody cares if left guard's not out. I know. But here's the thing. Now it's traveling into – they have the defenseless player stuff, but it's traveling into it's, – it's becoming on the point of the absurd. We saw what happened to Shiloh Sanders in the Colorado game where he got kicked out of the game for targeting. One of the worst calls I've ever seen. They should have to file a formal apology to him. The Panthers lose essentially lose the Colts game yesterday on an unnecessary roughness call against um, Pittman. Pittman comes out and says, that wasn't a bad call. I'd much rather him hit me there than knock me out or take my knees out. It wasn't a penalty, but I'm glad they called it. But it wasn't a penalty. He, he, I mean, he knew it wasn't a penalty. The fullback, Patrick Card on the, on the Ravens, who's 290 pounds, just runs into the, the linebacker and blocks him into the pile like he's been taught to do his entire life. He essentially gets called for excessive blocking. I don't know if it was helmet to, if it was because they hit their helmets. I don't know if he drove them up the pile. I don't know why they called it, but they, they fined him to like 21 grand. And then DeAndre Swift for the, you know, the X lion now of Eagles, he got penalized for low end is, you know, he runs over Percy Butler in the open field and he gets a fine. And you start to go, okay, this is starting to happen at a different rate than before. Why? Well, Roger Goodell's sitting in Germany with his wife drinking a beer in the stands. He says, we want to have more. We're, gonna ha we're going to have more international games. We're going to have another game somewhere else other than Europe next year, other than Europe and Mexico. Could be South America. Could be, who knows? We know the owners want 18 games. What was the formula to get to 17? The formula was go along with the players thinking they're being smart, reducing practice time, CBA agreements stuff. Have a huge discussion around concussions and, and, and quarterback, hit, all the things that we've already gotten here. So change the game. No hits over the middle. Can't tackle people hard. Can't hit the quarterback. Can't hit him below the knee. Can't hit him above the shoulder. Can, can basically hit him in the belly button, and that's about it. What they're going to do is they're going to come up with, with a study that says in two years' time from now, after they keep finding these guys until nobody hits anybody, that the National Football League is safer than it's ever been. And Roger Goodell will stand up in there and say, it's safer than it's ever been. I have studies. And we'll go, what about the study that you gave that said the turf had no, no difference than, than grass on injuries, but, but the actual studies say that it's, it's a multiple more dangerous. And players will tell you um, anecdotally that they feel awful on turf comparatively because it, it increases the um, intensity of changes of direction and fatigues your muscles more, therefore puts you in a, a greater chance to be harmed. This is science stuff. This isn't me just making things up. And they'll say, oh, yeah, we, well, we didn't see that evidence or whatever. Like they, like they already have. Like J.C. Treader already came out and, and called, called him on. What they're going to do is they're going to come out and they're going to, oh, I think we should get rid of one more preseason game. And then they're going to pitch for the 18th game. And listen, as fans, I'm sure everyone's going, oh, we'd love another week. 
But you have to understand the quality of football is just going to go down. Right now, you don't have 32 good teams in the NFL. You don't have 32 quarterbacks. The more games you play, the closer you're going to get to the the NBA or Major League Baseball. Nobody watches the regular season in the NBA anymore, guys. The only person that – I I turn the NBA on to watch Chuck and Shaq. That's it. Game's on. If I know it's on TNT at halftime, I'll watch them. People don't watch it because there's 82 games. They just started an in-season tournament because Adam Silver, who's the best commissioner in sports, said, listen, guys, nobody cares about the NBA. We got to do something. Nobody watches our 82 games. They just watch the playoffs. TV contracts are coming up. We need to make more money. Major League Baseball has the same problem. How do we increase? If you continue to dilute the product, the product is not going to be as good. But in the short term, these guys don't care. It's literally how much more can we make? So just be aware. Like you have to vote with your eyes. You have to write in. And if, if you do care about this stuff, then make us think about it. Get on Twitter, complain about it because you're ruining the game that all of us grew up with. Patrick Ricard's block is not, that's football. DeAndre Swift, DeAndre Swift lowering his shoulder is football. Michael Pittman getting hit going across the middle with somebody's shoulder, not the crown of his helmet, his shoulder is football. And don't tell us because you made a rule, even if the rule is nonsense we're just going to call it that way because you just made a rule or made a rule a long time ago about neutral zone infractions and the green bay packers got called twice on it for doing the exact same thing this weekend for doing the exact same thing that the philadelphia eagles and many other teams have done hundreds of times the exact same way with the exact same discrepancies against the exact same rule so all anybody is looking for is some some consistency and the worst thing the nfl could have done is made a joke about scripting the, the the season not because anybody really thinks it's true, but because everybody does believe that that puts any time to think about it, that there are teams that the NFL wants in the playoffs because their markets are bigger, that there are teams and owners that have more influence than others, that if there's an opportunity to put, I don't know, put the Cowboys in the Super Bowl, they're going to get some op- opportunities if the other option is like, uh, pick a small mar- pick a smaller market team. New Orleans, for example, like they're going to try to like dollars and cents matter. Let's just not act like they don't. The thing that's getting a little bit egregious is the money's so high now. What are we trying to prove? Let's let's protect the product. Let's protect the product. If something's not safe, that's fine. But. Remember, this isn't a safe sport. These guys get paid. I got paid because you understand the risks that are that are that come along with playing a dangerous, violent sport. I'm not saying we have to make it more violent, but I certainly don't know if we need to make it less violent. And I certainly don't know that, for example, hitting high versus taking your knee out, or calling every play without without being able to review it under you know under some maybe. Uh, more objective eyes instead of seeing things live. Not having those opportunities and just shelving them summarily while you're calling offsides on the on the tush push stuff is just bad practice. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look honest to the fans. And it certainly is not resonating with the players. So that's my soapbox moment. If you enjoy the show, guys, hit me up, Michael 68 on Twitter, Process to Perform and Extreme. Please subscribe, like, rate, and review this on uh, Process to Perform channel on YouTube. We will come out with a preview show. And I got to be honest with you, I don't know if I know who they're playing right now. I wish I could find out before the music hits. No, I was wrong. I guess we'll see. All right, guys. Thanks for playing.